All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started on the language arts we're going to be doing today. Remember, I mislabeled the packets. I thought there was going to be an extra week before um, we had Easter. So this is the packet you want to use. It says week five at the top, but just cross that off and go ahead and write week four. And the reason is because um, we don't have school Friday. So this packet has just four days worth of work. So we're going to get started by comparing two fiction texts. When you compare two fiction texts, pay attention to the characters, setting, and plot. What do the stories have in common? What is different about the stories? Directions. Read the text below and answer the questions that follow. There aren't really questions per se, but if you look on the back, what you're going to be doing is just comparing the text. I believe we also did this in um, the last packet from last week too. So we want to look at one text. We want to write some things about the characters, the setting, the events. This will be for the first text. And then for the second text, we'll write those here. And then anything that's the same, we're going to write in the middle, just like we've done before with the different um, stories we've read. And then if you take a look here, these directions are exactly the same as on the front side. But because we looked at this, we know we're looking for characters, setting, and events. So let's pay attention to that as we read our stories. Just like we did last time, we're going to do the same thing this time where we read one text and then um, maybe we jot down some things. You might want to use a pencil though because... If you do it this way, you might not know that something is in common with text two. So you might wanna write down a couple things in pencil and then read text two, and then you'll be able to write what goes in the middle and what goes on the side for text two. So let's take a look at text one. Just by looking at the two texts, um, what's one difference that you could say about the text? Without even reading it, just looking at the two different texts here. Text one is a little shorter than text two, so we already have a way to compare what we're seeing here. But remember, we're paying attention to character setting and plot, so we can't actually write that down, unfortunately. All right, text one. Today was the Valentine's party at school. Marcella had decorated her box so she could store her candy and cards in it. When she got home from school, her sister Janet was waiting anxiously. Janet stayed home from school because she was sick. She missed her class party. She couldn't wait to hear about Marcella's party. She hoped she would share some candy too. Marcella walked right past her sister. She had no plan to give her any candy that she had earned herself. If Janet wanted candy, she would have to use her allowance money. Then she could buy some for herself. Get out of my way, Marcella said to Janet. She went straight to the kitchen tabletop to dump out her box. She loved going through the candy and reading the cards. This was the best part. Janet watched as Marcella smiled and talked about the Valentine's party. Marcella put her arm out so her sister could not touch any of the candy. Just then, their mother walked into the kitchen. She noticed that Marcella was being rude. She noticed that Janet's feelings were hurt. Marcella, their mother said, you need to think about sharing with Janet. She was homesick today and didn't get, didn't get to go to her class party. How would you feel if that were you? All right, so we've already got a couple characters. Who were the characters in our story? Right, Marcella, Janet, and the mom. And what could we say about the setting for this? They were at school at a Valentine's Day party, and they were also at home. And then what is the plot? Remember, the plot's just kind of basically what happened in the story. Remember, pause at any time if you need some time to think. Right. Basically, Marcella went to her Valentine's party. Janet stayed home sick. Marcella came back and she was acting very rude and not wanting to share anything. Janet was sad about it. And her mom, um, their mom, asked Marcella to put herself in Janet's place and think, how would you feel if you had to stay home sick and you didn't get to get any candy? Right. So that's pretty much all that happened. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, write this down but then you'll have to do the middle part and the part for text two on your own remember if and i'll cross it out too if we end up finding out something changes here we'll cross it out if it ends up being the same for both so characters were janet marcella and their mom i'll just write mom 
but you know it's not my mom. Uh, if you need help with spelling, make sure you flip back to the other page to check that out too. The setting was at school. You could also write at a party and then at home and then events. Marcella went to a party. Janet stayed home sick. Marcella wouldn't share her candy. Remember, you do not have to copy what I'm writing here. If you can write this in your own words, that actually shows me that you really understand the story. If you're putting everything in your own words, and that will actually help you to remember the story better if you're able to put it in your own words. Notice I'm writing really big here because I'm doing this on the video. You don't have to write quite so big. All right, let's take a look at our next text and see if there's any similarities. Okay, so Jason was the star soccer player for his team and games were every Thursday after school. Today was game day and he was eager to continue his scoring streak. Playing forward meant that he had many opportunities to control the ball. He scored in every game of the season so far. The only problem was he never, sorry, the only problem was that he never let anyone else get a chance to shine. I'm just going to put a little note here. Pass, Jason, I'm ready, shouted Marco as he ran down the field. None of the other team's players were near him. He wanted to score a goal, but Jason wouldn't pass the ball. Marco grew frustrated as he ran and yelled, why didn't Jason want him to have the ball? Jason kept the ball close to his feet as he ran past his opponents. He heard Marco yelling, but he ignored him. Jason was so close to scoring a goal and he loved the feeling when he scored. The referee blew her whistle and announced that it was halftime. The players ran to the team benches where they would drink water and take a rest as they gathered as a team to listen to their coach. Gosh, Jason, whispered Marco, don't be such a ball hog. It's not fun being on a team with you. Listen, guys, Coach Terry said, I need you to pass the ball. Soccer is a team sport. If you can't be a team player, you can't be on this team. In order to win this game, we have to play together. That means paying attention to who is open and passing the ball. Jason hung his head as he realized that Marco and Coach Terry were right. He needed to change his style as a soccer player and be a better sport. When he got back in the game, he would pass the ball to his teammates. It was time to give them a chance to know how great it feels to score a goal. All right, so this was a way different story here. And one thing I wanted to mention, I made a mistake up here. I read, the only problem was he never let anyone else get a chance to shine. What mistake did I make here? I skipped a word, right? I skipped the word that. Did it matter that I skipped that word or was I still able to read the sentence and get the same meaning out of it? Right, I was able to read the sentence and get the same meaning out of it, but this is an important word. It says it in here. So if I'm skipping over it, then I'm not reading accurately. And we want to make sure we're reading accurately. We're reading the words that are there, right? So we don't want to skip words like I did. If you skip a word, go back and reread it because you might skip a word that's really important. Like, for example, what if this had said, the only problem was not that he never let anyone else get a chance to shine. That would be an important word, right? That would change the sentence completely. So even though I skipped over one word, um, I definitely want to go back and make sure I'm reading this accurately. All right, before we go ahead and talk about the character settings and plot, what is a ball hog? We have um, Marco saying, don't be such a ball hog. What does that mean? exactly what it says, right? Somebody who doesn't give the ball to other people. And then what does it mean to be a good sport? He said he's going to be a better sport. What does that mean? It means he's going to be a better player, right? He's going to be a team player. He's going to act like he should act, pass the ball, be nice about things, right? All right. So if you take a look at this sentence here, we have everybody that was mentioned in the text. So we have Jason, Marco, and Coach Terry. Obviously there's other teammates, but you can 
put that down here for characters. So we had Jason, Marco, and Coach Cherry. Remember, I'm going to have you guys do this part on your own. For the setting, where did the story take place? Look like it only really took place in one place, right? What were the events that happened? Remember, for this one, we were able to just use three sentences. You can probably do that here too. What happened in the beginning? And then because of this problem, it caused something else to happen, right? And then at the end, somebody decided to do something a little differently. Let's take a look at the beginning and maybe we'll do a couple of these together. Um, was there anything that was similar about the characters? Maybe Jason and Marcella were similar here because they both thought they were going to do something a certain way. They didn't want to share. She didn't want to share her candy. Jason didn't want to share the ball, right? So we can put that under characters. By the way, for the middle, you only have to find one thing for each um, heading, but just if you can find more, definitely write more. What was the same about the setting? They were kind of different, right? One was outside and one was inside, but they were kind of also at the same place, if you think about that. And then how about the events? In this story, Marcella was told to share. She was told, think about if that were you, right? Maybe kind of something similar happened in this story too. So see what you could do. Remember, filling out what happens in text two here, and then filling out what's the same in both texts in the middle. All right, so for my packet, I'm just gonna keep going and doing all the pages in between Monday and Tuesday. So once I get to Tuesday, I know, well, I don't need to do that anymore, I'm done. It's not Tuesday, right? Okay, so we're gonna be looking at conjunctions this week. And we've talked about conjunctions off and on before. And we also talked about um, conjunctions in relation to using commas. So let's take a look at what our definition is. A conjunction connects words phrases, and clauses. For example, in the above sentence, the word and is the conjunction. So here's the word and, and this is our conjunction. Notice that when we have and, and we're making a list here, right? You don't have to put a comma in front of the word before and. You can put it in and it's correct, but if you leave it out, that's fine too. However, this comma here between words and phrases in our list this you cannot leave out. You have to have a comma between the different items in your list. All right, all you're gonna do is circle all the conjunctions in each sentence below. If you're not sure which one is the conjunction, think about the words that you already know. You already know like what nouns and adjectives and adverbs are, what verbs are. So if um, you see one of those, cross them out if you're not sure which one the conjunction is. So let's do number one together. We'll do number one and number two. Randy and Jason ran down to the old baseball field. So what is the conjunction? And notice it says circle all conjunctions. So there could be more than one. If you said and, you're absolutely correct. And if you were using process of elimination, let's say you didn't remember and, you could cross out the proper nouns. You could cross out ran, because that's a verb. You might not know that down is a preposition, so you might have left that. Two is also a preposition. The old baseball field. This you could totally cross out. You have um, an adjective, and then Baseball field is the noun. You could also say that baseball is is um, being used as an adjective here too. And then the is actually something called an article, a and the. So you can cross that out also. So maybe you were unsure about these, which would not be conjunctions, um, but you would probably be able to narrow it down and figure out that and was it, especially since we have it written up here. All right, let's do number two together and then see if you can finish the rest on your own. Number two, Linda wanted to see the movie, but Sheila wanted to play games instead. So if you're not sure, we don't have and in this one, so it's got to be something else. If you were watching, if you watched the videos from last week, um, I mentioned what some of them are. Does anybody remember what's another example of a conjunction? It's a word that connects phrases, words, phrases, and clauses. But, but is another example of a conjunction here. So
So we could um, go ahead and circle that. And then again, if you weren't sure, you would cross off the proper nouns. You have here the verb that you know, and then to see, wanted to see, that's um, a verb in the infinitive form. So you could just cross that off the movie. You could cross off pretty much all of this stuff, right? Because most of them are just nouns, verbs, and then things, which are more nouns, right? All right, I'll read the rest for you, but see if you can do them on your own. And remember, there might be more than one conjunction. Number three, Paul couldn't decide if he wanted to order pizza or burgers. Number four, Janice forgot to study for her history test, yet she got every question right. Number five, Wayne visited Lucy every summer, for she was his best friend. You'll notice that in some cases, the conjunction is where there's kind of like a little bit of pause when you read the sentence. So think about that. Replay the video and see where I'm pausing and you might be able to find the conjunction that way too. Now, the, your last task is to write your own sentence and circle all the conjunctions. Then draw a picture based upon your sentence. You do not have to color the picture, but if you decide to, please don't use markers because it'll bleed through and we got stuff to do on the back. Make sure your sentence has, begins with a capital letter and ends with punctuation like a period or question mark or something like that. And make sure that if you use any words that were used up here, that you spell them correctly. All right, moving on. We're gonna talk about some suffixes today. And here are the suffixes we're gonna be looking at. So it says, um, part of the job, write the correct suffix for the word box to complete the name of each job. Find the completed words in the word find. You can also call a word find a word search. So we have er, or, ian, and ist. These are all our suffixes. Remember, a suffix is just a part of the word of a, of a word. It goes at the very end, and it usually gives some kind of meaning to something. Um, so you want to decide which one of these is going to go on each word to give it meaning, right? To make it a real word. Here we had edit. If I add OR, then I have editor. That's the job of somebody who has to look through and make sure everything's correct. And notice they found it here for you. How about teach? Teacher, teach or, teachian or teachest. <laughs> If you said teacher, you're absolutely correct. How about art? Arter, ardor, ardian, artist. If you said artist, you're absolutely correct. See if you can do the rest on your own. Um, and I would just do it, most of these you'll probably go, oh, immediately I know what this is. But for the ones that you don't, try to do it the way we just did it here where we read them with the suffix on the end. So you have conduct, sing, farm, um, this looks like it says combed, but it's going to say comed, and then you'll add the ending. Violin, act, magic, dent, and politic. Notice uh, you have a C at the end of magic and of politic. And does anyone remember the rule that we have with a C when it's followed by an I, an E, or a Y? How would we read it if I have a C-I, a C-E, or a C-Y? You're gonna read it as an S sound. So if you end up adding O-R to magic, magic -or, then nothing's gonna change, right? But if you added the E-R, what would it say? Magister, right? Because C-E says S. Or if you added I-A-N, mag oh, this is a this is a tricky one though, because it says magician, which actually doesn't say s in this case when we add the N. So my bad guys. So if we have C-I-A-N, it, it, it's a different um, suffix where it's gonna say shin, like magician or well, the only other word I can think of is on this paper. <laughs> but basically, when you have this C, it's going to say kind of like a shin, magician. So you have the answer to this one. See if you can figure out what the answer to this one would be. <laughs> All right. So um, spend some time working on this. Pause the video whenever you need to. 
Um, after this, we'll have our religion. I have your religion on here. And I'll make a separate video because the longer the videos are, the longer it takes to upload them. So for this one, all you're going to do is write a simple summary. And you want to write this about a book that you're reading. So whatever book it is you're reading, maybe I'm reading Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. So this says title or chapter. So you can put whichever one. So... Make sure that when you write the title or chapter, you look at the way that it's written in your book, okay? Because remember, titles are kind of tricky when it comes to capitalization. So you want to copy the capitalization that's there in the chapter and that's there in the title. That way we can practice getting used to um, what is capitalized in a title, right? Okay, now this part says somebody. So they're going to use these words, somebody, wanted, but, so, then. In order to, it's kind of like a short way for you to come up with a summary. But if you look underneath, it'll ask you a question. So who is the main character? And in Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, the main character is Min Lee, right? And then wanted, what does the main character want? She wants to find the old man of the moon. So she can change her family's fortune. But what is the problem of the story? The problem is she has to travel very far and by herself and she doesn't have a lot of money, right? So how does she solve the problem? Well, uh, we didn't get to finish the book, so we don't know how the problem was solved. But I mean, she took the little bit of things that she had and she followed the advice from people in order to um, get on with her journey, right? Then, how does the story end? Remember, you could also write this about a chapter. So if you're writing about a chapter, you wouldn't say, how does the story end? You would say how the chapter ended, right? So um, let's say we're reading the chapter where she finds the dragon. We would say the problem is that um, the dragon was all tied up and she wanted to save the dragon. So she helped get him out of the ropes. And that's kind of how the, the chapter ended. And then summary you're just going to use kind of what you wrote here to write a short paragraph. So if you wrote some good things here, then this will be really easy. So I would start by not saying she because this is my summary. So remember, start with the character's name. This says paragraph also. So make sure you use a two finger space here at the front. So I would say Min Lee wanted to find the old man of the moon to change her family's fortune. But her mother didn't believe in stories, so she left on her own and she went to try to solve the problem, just bringing a few things with her. And then, well, that was how she tries, what is the problem, how she tries to solve it. We don't know what happens at the end of this story, but I could say then, I don't know, she finds the old man of the moon and she gets some advice and she goes back home and tells everyone in the village and everything ends up being good, right? So remember, you're not writing about this story. You're writing about whatever book you're using for silent reading. We're still reading 30 minutes every day. If you have any questions about this, create an assignment in Class Dojo, a portfolio assignment. You can ask me your questions there or have your parents shoot me a message. I'll make one more video for today about what we're doing for religion. So see you in the next video.